Welcome to this episode of Shock Therapy. We're gonna be discussing front suspension setup. There's a lot of cool things that we can do with setting the front suspensions to really tailor it to a specific rider, a specific riding style to get the most handling performance out of your machine. There's a couple rules when it comes to setting up a suspension. One is don't be afraid to try things. If you record or write down all the settings that you start with, you can always go back. So the point is to try things in extremes. Go one way to one extreme, go the other way to the other extreme. That's gonna give you this window and then you can work towards the middle. One of the biggest problems is people don't wanna change something. They don't wanna, you know, they're afraid that they're gonna make it worse. And that's okay, making it worse is okay because you know which direction you need to go. The other thing to do is once you find something that works, something that you're comfortable with, don't change it. If you go riding and you feel like something's off, don't blame the suspension because a lot of times what you do is you chase yourself round and round in circles. Do a lot of tuning, set up, once you find something that works, stick with it. One of the most important things that we're going to focus on when it comes to suspension tuning is going to be spring rate. Spring rate, the spring tension, is either going to be a coilover spring or it's going to be the air pressure inside an air shock. It's responsible for holding the machine up. If you didn't have the spring rate, the shock would collapse, the front end would be all the way down. Spring rate is going to dictate how the sled is handled at the front end. Too low of a spring rate, too low of ride height, it's going to dart, it's going to feel soft, it's going to feel unpredictable. Too much spring rate, the suspension's not going to be active enough. It's going to feel uncompliant, it's going to feel rigid. If you're off trail, you're doing technical riding and you side hill, you're loading that shock more. If there's not enough spring rate, you're over collapse the shock. Spring rate is very critical. And a general rule of thumb for technical terrain off trail riding, you want more spring rate, you want more tension, you want a very stiff front end. Let's talk for a second about the difference between spring rate and valving. Spring rate's job is to control the ride height of the snowmobile. Its primary job is to make sure that the snowmobile and the shock stays fully extended through its normal riding situation. Valving, on the other hand, its primary job is to control the way the shock moves through its travel whenever it hits an impact. So a lot of times people confuse what spring rate does versus valving. If you're going along down the trail and you're bottoming out your shock, chances are it's not a spring rate issue. So adding more spring rate, air pressure, more preload on a, on a coilover, is not gonna solve that problem. What you'll need is a different shock that's tuned and valved for a more advanced or aggressive style of riding. So we understand that spring rate is very critical to have set properly for the type of riding that we're doing. But how do you know if the spring rate is set right? There's the feel that we talked about. Does it feel too soft? Does it feel too stiff? But a lot of times that can almost be misleading because there's all kinds of different trail conditions or off trail conditions and those will be changing all the time. So the best way to get a starting point is to measure sag. Sag is the amount of shock travel that's used up just with the sled sitting on the ground. So the weight of the machine is going to compress the shock to a certain point just sitting there. And that amount is called sag. When we lift up on the front end and the shock fully extends, we can measure how much that sag is and adjust the spring rate to match it exactly what we want it to be. So on this shock, to demonstrate sag, we have a zip tie. And when I slide it all the way down to the seal, it's gonna help us measure how much ride in or sag we have currently on the shock. It's very important to find the proper amount of sag that you need to push down on the front suspension or the bumper two or three times and let it return naturally. If you artificially lift and let the sewn bill settle, it's not gonna give you a really good reading on where the sag is. So that's something that you need to do initially is push down on the front suspension two or three times, let it return naturally. We're gonna slide our zip tie down and we'll find out where our sag is at. So you can see here that we have about an inch of sag on this shock. With the air pressure that's set, the sewing mill is settling down into its travel about one inch. As a general rule of thumb, you want three quarters of an inch to one inch of sag. 
and this will set a proper amount of spring rate at the front end. So if you measure sag and you have more than one inch, then add air pressure to the spring rate to push that front end up. If you measure and you have less than three quarters of an inch, your shock is set too stiff. So take some of the spring weight away and let that shock settle down into its travel a little bit more. One of the really cool features with the Fox shock is this Evol chamber right here. What this Evol chamber does is allow us to set the spring rate progressively. So by adding air pressure to this separate chamber, as the shock goes through its travel, the spring rate gets progressively stiffer. The more pressure we add to this Evol chamber, the more progressive and steeper the spring rate curve. The more we take away, the flatter the curve or the less progressive the spring rate will be. What this means is that for people riding in the mountains, technical terrain, when you're side hilling and you're loading that ski and you're using more of the travel because more of the sled weight is going to be just on one shock, that spring rate down in the lower part of the travel will be that much stiffer. So it will accommodate or hold that front end properly. The other thing it means is that you can tune the Evol chamber for things like cornering. You know, it, the Evol chamber will resist body roll just because the further you get into the travel, the stiffer the shock will be. One very cool feature to a lot of aftermarket shocks is a rebound setting. The reason that rebound is adjustable is because rebound controls the rate at which a shock expands. So if you're going over a bump and it compresses, that shock can either expand in a very fast rate or a slow rate. The faster that it returns, the better it is for closer bumps. So you want that shock to expand and be ready for the next bump. But if it's too fast, it's going to buck you. You know, it's going to come off of one bump, it's going to be really aggressive, and it's going to be impacting the next one. So we want to slow it down a little bit. If the rebound is too slow, the shock is going to compress and it's not going to extend far enough to hit the next bump. And that's what's called packing. So packing is every time the shock hits a bump, because it's not fast enough to return and be ready for the next bump, the shock slowly gets shorter and shorter and shorter. And when you do that, the front end lowers, the weight transfers more to the front end, you have less travel to accept the next bump, and then you have big problems. So tuning the rebound is pretty simple. Start in the middle. This one has 22 clicks. Start at 11, ride it for a while. Then go to the extremes. Go all the way to the, the 22 clicks, go all the way to zero. The slower the rebound, the more clicks in. The faster the rebound, the more clicks out. One of the best ways to understand whether or not you should be making changes to your front suspension is to identify if you're having any problems. A lot of times what we encounter more than anything else with front suspensions is kind of this handling issue where, you know, maybe you're going down the trail and it's, it's a darting, unpredictable. It feels like there's a lot of body roll. Um, off trail it could be the submarining or the diving. One ski just seems to give out. Maybe you're side hilling along and it, it just seems like one ski buries and the back end gets loose and washes out. This can be one of two issues. It can be a shock issue, which is a, a low spring rate problem, or it can be a geometry issue, which is over transfer the front. Geometry and advanced suspension setup is something that we're going to cover in a later video. But my suggestion that you start with is add a lot of spring rate to your front shock. It'll hold the front end up a little bit better and it'll, it'll take that terrain. The other thing it could be in the shock is it could be a very soft low speed compression valve setting. And that's something that is typical on OEM shocks. OEM shocks are just not tuned to handle that type of terrain in that way. So the best thing that you can do is replace that shock with something like this that's tuned for a more advanced or aggressive style of riding. Overall, the most important thing to understand about front suspension setup is start with the right equipment. If you have OEM equipment on your sled and you're trying to do an advanced style of riding, there's no amount of suspension tuning or setup that you can do to that front end to get it ready for that type of riding. You need aftermarket equipment that's specifically designed for what you want out of it. From there, you can do the sag ride height settings, tune the air pressure or the spring rate, set the rebound, and you'll be good to go. That front end will take anything that you can throw at it.